a pleasant good evening, everybody. This is Sports News. I'm Joe Borgen. This is going to be our next Phillies podcast, The Bell Take, as we talk about the Phillies. Some of them, again, like I said in the video yesterday, are somewhat finding stride because they are. Look how great their pitchers are pitching at home lately, especially the starting rotation. Now it's just about being able to find the offense without Bryce Harper being in the lineup, and particularly at home. Because the last series, as the Phillies look to bounce back against the Dodgers starting this evening, the last series, they got blanked 3 nothing in the first game. As Eflin, honestly, yes, he's the one that gave up the one run, but he pitched just as good as Clevenger. He pitched an extra inning than Clevenger as well, where the dancing Clevenger on the mound was just fooling the Phillies left and right, and they could get absolutely nothing going, where in that game... Austin Nola got the fielder's choice to score. Robbie Cano singled and Trent Grisham doubled to get the runs for the Padres. But you can't blame the Phillies pitching whatsoever because they did their job other than James Norwood, who struggled in this game. But Hand, Nelson, and Eflin all did their jobs. The Phillies, even with Norwood's struggles, you got to be able to score at least three runs with that offense. It doesn't matter if Bryce Harper's in or not. With the way that offense still looks on paper without Bryce Harper in, you should be able to score at least three. And then what do they do the next day? When Wheeler caved nine and went seven, they were able to score at least three. <clears throat> and that's what got them to win. Was it a great game by the Phillies offense? No, by no stretch of the imagination. Hoskins was able to have a nice homer. JT Romito was able to have a single in the first. And then in the fourth, Oduba was able to double down the line um, on third or on the first base side, I should say, to be able to score the run, but they couldn't add on. But Knable was able to save it, and again the pitching of the Phillies, where it was Alvarado then in the middle who was able to have a good game in this one, which was nice to see because again, as I said in the past video, he's been very up and down this season. It would be nice to get him to have some consistency. It was nice to see him have a good middle game in the Padres series, but then you Darvish keeping the ball down. Only had a couple bad starts this year, as Joe Girardi said, completely flat in the Phillies. And they could absolutely get nothing going against him. Yes, on the scoreboard, they had eight hits to ten. That's, it doesn't matter. Because their hits were so pitch-patched together that they didn't really equal anything. You didn't have anybody on base for anybody. You kept just getting a single here, a single there, and then you got the two outs. and So it, it didn't amount to anything. Those eight hits were kind of, that, that's just a stat line that it, it looks better than it is. And then when it came to this game, Robbie Cano, just like the first game, hurt the Phillies again with a single, and then Kim hit a sacrifice fly. This is one of those games. Gibson did have one off inning, but overall pitched good. Dominguez, Bellotti continues to impress Brogdon pitch good in this game, and Brad Hand. So that game was like the first game. Overall good pitching effort, just zero offense from the Philadelphia Phillies, as that's the key and the first most key. As in the beginning of this video, we quickly recap the San Diego Padres series. Well, that's the first most key in having any shot of success against the Los Angeles Dodgers. You're going to need big time to score for your pitchers because Ranger Suarez also has been pitching good at home recently and has just been pitching good in general recently but you're going up against another very tough lefty this is going to be a battle of two good lefties that are young in the league in Julio Urias and Ranger Suarez where lately Ranger Suarez is coming off of seven innings against the Dodgers of good ball six innings of good ball against Seattle and five innings of good ball and um, six innings of good ball against Colorado. So he's been pitching pretty damn good recently. The problem for the Phillies is Julio Urias has been pitching pretty damn good recently, except for against us. So hopefully, just like on that May 14th game down there or west in L.A., the Phillies are able to attack him like they were out west because otherwise, minus uh, a couple starts early in the season, Julio Urias has been spotlit this year when he's pitched against everybody else minus the Phillies, he had before that five straight really good starts, and then the Phillies were able to shellock him. So hopefully they're able to have some of the same successes. He's able to leave ones over the middle, and Rangers able to have another good start against him tonight. The key would be to continuously keep getting the good hitting out of the Bohms that have been doing really good, and continuously keep getting hopefully at least one hit out of Reese from the leadoff spot or continuously getting a good at bat. Schwarber needs to get going big time. Johan Camargo's continued to be a guy. I don't expect him to hit lethally the entire season, but where he's hitting around right now, if he can continue to pick it like that, that's fine. And then Quinn 
is in there. It would be nice for him to get on a hot streak again like he was at the beginning of the season. But again, you can't expect much from him. He's just a depth uh, put in player sometime that has to be in more now because Harper can't play the outfield. So it's going to be interesting to see because the lineup, Herrera needs to kind of get back to what he did when he first came in. He got the double the last series. Maybe that can get him going because having Roman Quinn starting and not just as a fielding replacement when he's not on one of his hot streaks does really lessen your lineup as now he went down to 120 after in his first couple games he was hitting good but it, since then not so good so you need to have a more well-rounded lineup um but uh it's going to be interesting to see what they're able to do here the phillies because the guys i'm most confident in honestly is Bohm, who's not even one of the more experienced players on the team and castellanos and also i love what gene segura has been able to do this season Minus those three, it's been too inconsistent. Where JT, he had a big hit last year, but has been very inconsistent of late. Reese still is trying to fully get going. Schwarber's been bad. Odubel's been inconsistent of late. And Quinn's been bad at the plate. And then Camargo, Camargo's been solid at the plate. But I wouldn't say, like, the type of player he is, you're not, when he's at the dish going, oh, my God, I have the utmost confidence in him. It's kind of like having your better version of Pedro Feliz, where it's like, oh, this is a good player. We love having him on the team, but he's not necessarily the guy you wanted the bat rack in the most pivotal spot. But I think the key to beating the Dodgers, have a more consistent offense, continue to pitch just like they did out west in L.A. and continuing against the Padres. If the Phillies can keep getting that pitching, they're going to be golden because you would think eventually the damn offense has to wake up and come around, where hopefully in this series it doesn't revert to the offense coming around and then the Phillies pitching struggling because that would stink big time obviously for the Phillies where in game two of this series the Phillies right now on here it doesn't have for the Saturday game anybody actually listed as the starters where let me check on MLB if it has anybody listed as the starters for Saturday Uh, on here for Saturday it has Nola listed for us and TBD for the Dodgers, so it'll be interesting. It'll probably end up being one of those kids again since the rotation's a little messed up because of injuries. So they'll probably have to go with one of the kids again. So that definitely gives us an advantage. So if you can steal the game tonight, the Phillies should be able to. Now again, the key word is should be able to um, potentially take this three-gamer against the Dodgers because they have an advantage tomorrow, it certainly looks like, with Aaron Nola going on the hill against what looks to be a uh, guy that's just going to be one of those spot starters for the Dodgers. So that definitely would go advantage Phillies there. So I think the Phillies definitely have one win in this series in them. That's for damn sure. And they're de- it's definitely going to at least be like the Padres series where they'll probably be able to win the middle game. But going into this series, you're trying to look for bounce back. You got Eflin, Nola, and Suarez on the hill. All have pitched really well lately, including a Zach Eflin, who's similar to Aaron Nola, just doesn't get... Um, a lot of scoring for himself, and there's really nothing you can do about that. His only bad outing was against the Mets um, before he came back and pitched on the 17th. But before that, when he was out for a minute, Zach Eflin, he pitched great against the Rockies when the Rockies were still going. And he also pitched okay um, against the Rockies prior to that in back-to-back starts. He pitched okay against the Rockies and then great against the Rockies six days later. So he's been still finding his full stride, but after last outing, it seems like he's getting it clicked in where if he can continue to do that, uh, I think the Phillies are going to have a good chance when Eflin pitches, but it can't be like that um, game. It can't be like the Padres where you just can't get enough offense. And that's going to be the issue there, where the dude's controlling the strike zone immensely. He only he doesn't even have five walks yet, Eflin. So I think the advantage would even go to the Phillies, or at least the evenness would go to the Phillies there, where because Goslin's a great pitcher, he actually has the better surface numbers than Eflin. But Goslin does still lose. He has the um, double digits walks. He does still sometimes get over the heart of the strike zone, and if you can get that version of Tony Gosling, just like they got that version of Urias, which doesn't show up often, but shows up sometimes, the Phillies are going to have a chance. I think the goal for this series, I don't expect the series sweep. They took three out of four, obviously, from L.A. That was a huge, whopping, great happiness surprise for me. In this series, I want to go in with the goal of winning two out of three, but would I honestly be mad if they only end up taking one out of three from the Dodgers? Not really, because that's kind of what my expectation is going in, unfortunately, because this team has just been too topsy-turvy up and down 
that you can't get a full gauge on them that I would say going in my expectations is them to take that middle game because it seems like you're going to have a spot starter against Nola. But my hope and goal would be to take two out of three from the Dodgers, which I think your best chance would be honestly coming off of a bad start. Maybe the young kid can leave it over again, try to jump on your race, and then win that game where it looks like they're going to have a spot starter against Aaron Nola. I would say that would be the best chance for the Phillies to take two out of three because Goslin is going strong, but Goslin is a pitcher too. That doesn't always get the deepest in the game. Sometimes still has that one-off inning. So if you can jump on them then, which other teams haven't been able to do really, then the Phillies might be able to get a win from there. But who says our Phillies are going to be able to jump on them like other teams haven't been able to do because they tend to leave a lot in scoring position as well. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please subscribe down below or up above on the easy to use widget to keep the channel going to the goal of 250 or more by the start of June.